Hey guys, what's up? I want to introduce you to the Open Builds Lead Machine. This is a true modular CNC machine, no custom plates, everything straight off the shelf, and you're gonna love this machine. It's all lead screw driven, it's super cool. Let's go over some of the cool features that it has. So in this build, we've utilized a C-Beam extra large gantry plate throughout the build on all axis, including the Z and the X, as you see here, with a 90 degree mounting configuration. We've also utilized the Open Builds Extreme Solid V-Wheels for extra strength. We also have configured the extra large gantry plates in a sandwich configuration here for added strength. And we use dual solid V-wheels, super strong Y gantry system here. So in this configuration, we have a one meter square lead machine, which can process material of a little over two foot by two foot. You can see how we utilize C-beam throughout the build. You can also see by the side rails here, this is also V-slot, so you can grow this machine really tall. And one really nice feature I like about this machine, overall the wiring is hidden. Everything is tucked away nice and neat, and you just have a nice clean work surface to work with. This lead machine, being as modular as it is, allows for all kinds of attachments. A plasma cutter can be added to this machine as well. All right guys, so follow along with the build videos and we can't wait to see what you make with your Open Build lead machine. All right, so moving forward here, we are going to be assembling our extreme wheels. So in this step, we're gonna need our wheel shell for our extreme. We're also gonna need two of our open belts bearings and one of our precision shims. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and grab the shell, one of our open belts bearings, Simply put this into place, it should snap on like so. Take your precision shim in the middle here, your additional open built bearing, and snap this into place. And that's what your wheel assembly should look like. So let's go ahead and assemble all of our additional wheels and we'll move on to our next step. So on this next step, we will be assembling our nut blocks to our extra large gantry plate. So we will need to gather these parts, two nut blocks, four nylon hex nuts, which come with your nut blocks, four 20 millimeter screws, four 3mm aluminum spacers, and four precision shims. Here on the extra large plate, you will see two slotted holes on the sides. This is where the nut blocks will mount. So taking your 20mm screws, let's put these through the holes. Turn the plate over. So next, we'll need to take our 3mm aluminum spacers and place them on each screw. Following that, we'll add our precision shims. Following that, we'll add our nut blocks, making sure that the hexed recessed side is facing upward. Then place the nylon hex nuts into each block. So I just simply place these onto each screw, and from there we'll tighten them down. So now I'll tilt the plate to the side and mount these into the blocks. So once you have that complete, make sure to back off of each screw. You want a little wiggle room here for your nut blocks. And the purpose of this is so our lead screw will seat flush to each nut block. So once we feed the lead screw through, we will tighten down these nut blocks. So basically you want the right orientation for these blocks. So just leave them a little bit loose and let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step we are going to attach our extra large gantry plate to our 250 millimeter 20 by 80 V-slot rail. So we need to go ahead and gather these parts. Our assembly that we have so far, our 20 by 80 V-slot rail, four 12 millimeter screws, and four and five T-nuts. Now essentially what we're going to do here is attach the extra large gantry plate to this rail to create a Y-axis plate, which is a really cool example of the modularity of the system and how you can just troubleshoot certain aspects of building the machine. Who needs custom plates when you can use the Open Builds modular system to create your own? So to get started, let's go ahead and insert four of our T-nuts, two, per track on the outside rails of the 20 by 80 
and here on the extra large gantry plate just want to take notice here to our centric side and our standard fixed side which will be for our aluminum spacers you want to make sure that the eccentric side is facing to the bottom of the 250 rail so as we flip this over just make sure that you have the larger holes here towards the bottom now we want to align these bottom two holes and these top two holes to the T-nuts and then mount this into place so essentially what I like to do is maneuver the T-nuts into position I'm going to mount the bottom two first and then move to the top portion and don't tighten them down completely because we want to be able to move this system and make sure that it's square to our 250 rail so up top here I'm going to go ahead and mount each one of my T-nuts once again backing off of each screw so we have mobility here then I'm going to set my plate upright with the V-slot and make sure that this is completely square onto your surface that you're building this now another way to check this would be to take the additional extra large gantry plate and use it as a square next to your assembly so that looks good now keeping it in place I'm going to tighten down each screw so that completes this assembly let's go ahead and move on to the next step so moving forward to the next step on this step we'll be attaching the extra large gantry plate and a sandwich configuration to our additional gantry plate so we'll be assembling the wheels to the sandwich configuration so we need to go ahead and gather these parts eight extreme wheels that we've already assembled four nine millimeter aluminum spacers four six millimeter aluminum spacers four six millimeter eccentric spacers four black nylon hex nuts eight precision shims four slot washers four sixty five millimeter screws of course our additional gantry plate some painters tape M5 ball driver and spanner wrench so to get started first we're going to take our system that we have so far on each one of these screws on the ends of our extra large gantry plate we're going to insert our sixty five millimeter screws so go ahead and insert each screw and you'll see on the bottom here how these holes are larger and that's for the purpose of our eccentric spacers as they need the room to rotate to adjust tightness to our rail which we call that term preload and you'll see on top that these holes are slightly smaller and that's for the fixed side of wheels on this gantry plate so next what I like to do is take some of the painters tape this way we can keep the screws in place on the extra large gantry plate so grabbing a piece about the size of the length of the gantry plate and what I'll do is make sure the screws are flush into the plate and then I'll add this piece of tape here and that'll keep my screws in place and the same for the opposite end and just make sure that that is mounted onto the gantry plate so facing this system to the back we'll go ahead and start our stack configuration for our wheels here at the bottom you'll see that the holes are slightly larger and like I mentioned before that's going to be for our eccentric spacers and you'll see on each eccentric spacer I have the six millimeter stamp marked and this is the, for the purpose of identifying where my preload is set now what I mean by preload is how tight the wheels are to the rail as you can see we have an offset center here on the eccentric spacer and as this rotates in its position it can tighten or loosen the amount of pressure and friction your wheels have on the rail so it's very important to not add too much pressure to the rail because that can cause wear on your system but add just enough to where you have friction on the rails and your system is not able to move so when we place these we want to leave them in a fully open position uh, it's going to be facing away from the fixed wheels so it'll be facing us so this marked portion of the eccentric will be the fully open position so this is exactly how we'll face it same for our additional screw then add the precision shim next following that one of our wheels 
And if you have any issues with the precision shim in the middle of the wheel interfering with the mounting of the wheel to the screw, just take the wheel like so, spin it, and it'll find its position in the middle of the wheel. On top of each wheel, we'll add 9mm aluminum spacers, and then an additional wheel. Next, a precision shim. And then lastly, our 6mm centric spacers. Once again, making sure that that marked side is facing you away from your fixed wheels, and also making sure that the slip side of the eccentric is facing up. And that's the mount to our additional gantry plate. So that completes our eccentric side. Let's move up to the fixed side of wheels, or the standard side of wheels. 6mm aluminum spacer first. Next, the precision shims. And our additional wheels. And if you can't spin the wheel on the screw to center that precision shim, you can always take your ball driver and shift it into place. Next are 9mm aluminum spacers and our additional wheels. Following that are our precision shims. And lastly, the 6mm aluminum spacers. So that completes our config for our wheels. Let's go ahead and take our gantry plate, making sure once again the eccentrics are on the bottom here to align with our eccentric side and our standard side facing the top portion of the plate. So placing this on top, you should feel the eccentric snap into place. From there, we'll take our slot washers and place them on each one of our screws, making sure that the flat part of the, the washer, not the rounded part, is facing down to the gantry plate. And lastly, I'll add my nylon hex nuts to each one of these screws, just thread them into place. And we'll take the system and bring it upright and take off the painter's tape. So now let's go ahead and tighten this whole system down. So once you have your gantry plate tightened down, take a look at the eccentric spacers. Make sure that the mark side is facing away from the fixed wheels. Once again, we want this to be at a fully open position so we can slide this, this system onto our C-beam and make the adjustments to our eccentrics. So inevitably these, these eccentrics will move as you're tightening the system down. So just rotate those back into place. So now my eccentrics are at the fully open position. As you can see, each one of my eccentrics has the marked end facing me. So that looks good. So our assembly is complete. Check that out. That is looking really sweet. All right, so let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to the next step. So on this next step, we will be reinforcing our gantry system that we have so far. So this Y-axis plate that we've created we are going to reinforce with our cast corner brackets on each one of these threaded holes of the extra large gantry plate. So let's go ahead and gather these parts. Four cast corner connectors, four M5 T-nuts, four 10 millimeter screws, and four 8 millimeter screws. Now the reason for the difference in the screw size is these cast corners will mount to the 250 V slot and you'll see that the feet are going to space this cast corner out slightly. So we need to make up for that difference by adding the additional length to our screw. So the 10 millimeter screws will be mounting into the V-slot to our T-nuts. So to start off, let's take two T-nuts on each side of the 20 by 80 V-slot. Go ahead and insert those, making sure your flange side is facing the inner track of the 20 by 80. And the same for the left side. From there, Simply slide the T-nuts to align to each one of these holes. Just makes for an ease of assembly here. So once that's complete, take one of your cast corners and let's place that right above our threaded hole on the extra large plate. Taking one of the eight millimeter screws, we're gonna mount that into place. 
and same for each one of these holes. So now taking the 10 millimeter screws, I'm going to mount each one of these cast corners into the 20 by 80. So simply align the T-nut and then mount it into place. I'll just go around and make sure all your screws are tight. So now that that assembly is complete, you can see how rigid this Y plate is going to be. Not only are we reinforced with our cast corners, but we also have this mounted with T-nuts onto the extra large gantry plate. So this is a strong mated surface here. It's going to make for an awesome Y plate assembly. So what we need to do now is go ahead and create another one of these Y plates. So follow along with these same steps. And what we've learned from these steps, we'll go ahead and apply it to our additional Y plate and complete that assembly. So let's go ahead and get that done. Guys, moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our nut blocks to our extra large plate here, and this is going to be for the purpose of our X axis. So we're going to need our extra large plate, two of our nut blocks, four of our 20 millimeter screws, four of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our precision shims, and four of our nylon hex nuts. So to get started here, guys, we're going to put our four screws in these holes here that are on the side of our middle placement recessed hole here. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, now we're gonna tilt this to the side. 
and we're going to go ahead and start our stacking configuration for our spacing. So starting with our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, we're going to put them on all of our screws. And let's add our precision chimps next. Alright, following that, our nut blocks, making sure that our hex design is facing upward. And then we're going to place our nylon hex nuts in these slots. Alright, now let's just tilt this to the side. And let's tighten it down, guys. Alright, so we want to make sure that these are kind of loose. So if you need to, go ahead and back off of the screws. You want to have some room to wiggle here for our lead screw. So, that looks good guys. Let's go ahead and put this to the side. And we'll move on to our next step. Alright guys, so moving forward here, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our X carriage assembly. So basically we're going to use our assembly that we have so far with an extra, extra large plate. We're also going to need four of our 65 millimeter screws, eight of our extreme wheels, four of our six millimeter centric spacers, four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our slot washers, eight of our precision shims, four of our black nylon hex nuts, and let's go ahead and get started here guys. So we're gonna grab our first plate here, which is gonna be our extra large without the nut blocks, and we're gonna run our 65 millimeter screws through each corner of the plate. We're gonna go ahead and rotate this around. And we're going to go ahead and start our stack configuration. Starting with our eccentrics, making sure that they're all marked here so we can identify how much preload to put on our axis. So let's go ahead and put those on first. Making sure the black side is facing us, away from the fixed wheels. Next we're going to put on our precision shims for both screws. Followed by our extreme wheels. Followed by our 9mm aluminum spacers. And our additional wheel another precision shim, and lastly our eccentrics, making sure that the lip side is facing up to latch into our sandwiched plate. Alright, so our eccentric side is done, let's go ahead and move up to our fixed wheel side with our 6mm aluminum spacer first, followed by our precision shims, our additional wheels, followed by a 9mm aluminum spacer, our second wheel, precision shims next, and our 6mm aluminum spacers. Alright, so now we can go ahead and stack on our other plate, making sure that our fixed wheels are going to be with our fixed wheels, and our eccentric side is going to be with our eccentric side. So let's make sure that we stack that correctly. Make sure the eccentric snap into place. Then we'll go ahead and put on our slot washers. And add your black nylon hex nuts. We're going to thread those on to keep everything in place. Alright, that looks great. Let's go ahead and turn it to the side and let's tighten these screws down, guys. Alright, perfect. That looks great, guys. So we're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics now, making sure that they are open. So make sure the black side is facing away from the fixed side of the wheels. Alright. That looks perfect guys. Let's go ahead and move this to the side and we'll move on to our next step. Alright, moving forward here guys, we are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our Z-axis plate which will be mating to our X carriage assembly. So on this step we're going to need our anti-backlash nut block, one of our extra large plates, two of our 20mm screws, two of our 3mm aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, and two of our nylon hex nuts. So to start this off guys, we're going to take notice to our holes here on our extra large plate. We are simply going to run our screws through these two holes. So let's go ahead and do that now. Rotating this plate around. We are going to start our stacking configuration with our 3mm aluminum spacers first. Followed by our precision shims. And then we're going to go ahead and add our anti-backlash nut block, making sure that the hex side is facing you, and make sure that our threaded hole here for our lead screw is facing you as well. So the lead screw is basically going to go up and down. Our x-axis is going to go side to side, so make sure that you have that correct, guys, because otherwise we'll have an issue when mating the plates together. Alright, so let's go ahead and put our nylon hex nuts on to our anti-backlash nut block. 
And then we're going to tilt this to the side. And let's go ahead and tighten it down. That is the assembly that we uh, needed to get done with the anti-backlash nut block, and that looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward here, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our Z-axis plate. So we're going to need our assembly that we have so far. Four of our extreme wheels, four of our 27 millimeter screws, two of our 6 millimeter eccentric spacers, two of our 6 millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our precision shims, and four of our black nylon hex nuts. So to get started here guys, we're basically going to put our screws in each one of these corner holes. So let's go ahead and do that now. And let's rotate the plate around. And we'll start our stacking configuration on our fixed side first, which is going to be on our left side. So a six millimeter aluminum spacer on each screw, followed by our precision shims on each screw. And then on our right side is going to be the eccentric side. So our eccentric spacers, as you can see I have pre-marked. And they're going to be facing to the right, making sure that they are open so we can add preload later on. So let's go ahead and put those on. Followed by our precision shims. And then our wheels on each one of the screws. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and add our black nylon hex nuts. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and tilt this to the side and let's tighten down these wheels. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and adjust our eccentrics now to make sure that they're open. Making sure the black side that you marked is facing you away from our fixed wheels. So there's one and there's two. That's perfect. That looks great guys. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to our next step. Alright guys, so moving on to the next step here. On this step we are going to be mating our Z-axis to our X-carriage assembly. So we're going to need our two assemblies as well as four of our 12 millimeter screws. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and tighten down our anti-backlash nut block, making sure that it is straight and it's running vertically through this plate. Go ahead and tighten that down because once we made it, you won't be able to adjust this. All right, that's perfect. So now we're gonna flip this plate on top of our X carriage assembly, taking notice to our design and our extra large plate accompanying this mating process. So we have two holes here and down here that have threads. So basically all we have to do is screw in our 12 millimeter screws and the bond is strong between the Z and the X carriage. So let's go ahead and put those screws in now and let's tighten this down. And before we go any further, make sure that your plates are square as well as your anti-backlash nut block running vertically so you'll see that the threads are facing us. And then also on the X-carriage assembly, you'll see that the nut blocks are on this side of the plate running horizontally. That's very important guys, so make sure that your plates look exactly like this. Alright, so let's go ahead and finish this up, tighten down all your screws. All right, make sure all your screws are tight. But as you can see, this bond is perfect. There's no movement in this gantry system whatsoever. That looks excellent, guys. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right, guys, so on this step, we are going to be assembling our Z-axis. So in this step, we're gonna require our Z-axis plate mated to our X-carriage assembly. We're gonna need two of our C-beam end mounts, our bleed screw, two of our eight millimeter bearings, two of our 8mm lock collars, two of our 8mm shims, eight of our 20mm screws, two of our 50mm screws, two of our 40mm aluminum spacers, our flexible coupling, our NEMA 23 motor, our ball driver set, and our spanner wrench. So to get started here guys, we're gonna go ahead and start off with our Z-axis. We need to adjust our centrics to our 250mm C-beam. So let's go ahead and place that by simply running it through the channel here. Just like so. So now we just need to test the preload. It actually feels pretty tight so far. Needs some adjustments, so let's go ahead and do that now. Adjusting your centrics in the same direction. Just make sure to test the wheels. You don't want them too tight or too loose. You need to find that right median. All right, that's perfect actually. That looks really good. All right, so now that we have our 250 millimeter C-beam in place, we are going to flip this assembly over and we are gonna mount our C-beam end mounts to our actuator that we have so far. So let's go ahead and take our C-beam end mounts 
making sure that the inside recessed hole is facing inward. That's going to be for our 8mm bearing. It's going to place right in this hole here. So let's make sure that that's facing inward. And let's go ahead and take our 20mm screws and let's mount the C-beam and mount to our C-beam. Make sure all your screws are in there tight. Let's add our last 20 millimeter screw here to the C-beam end mount. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate this system. We're going to do the same thing for the other side. Let's go ahead and place our C-beam end mount. Once again, paying attention to the recessed hole. It needs to be facing inward. And let's go ahead and mount this with our 20 millimeter screws. All right, perfect. So now that we have our C-beam end mounts in place, we're gonna go ahead and mount our motor. So we're just gonna set our system down first. Taking our motor, we're gonna attach our flexible coupling, paying attention to the whole spacing here. We have a quarter inch bore for our motor shaft, and then we have a larger diameter here for our lead screw. So let's go ahead and attach that now. So we're gonna find the flat shaft of the motor here, and we're gonna adjust our set screws to line up with that, and then we're gonna tighten that down. That allows you to have a firm lock to the motor shaft, so that's not going anywhere. Let's go ahead and spin this around, and then we'll tighten up this additional screw. So now we're gonna go ahead and spin our motor in the right direction here. We wanna make sure that the wires are facing to the back of the Z-axis, so we can run these wires through our cable chain along the x-axis. So that's perfect. Let's go ahead and grab our 50 millimeter screws along with our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers and let's mount this into the C-beam end mount. So these two holes here on the C-beam end mount are threaded for the purpose of mounting our motor. So let's go ahead and line those up and fasten them down. All right, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and rotate the system back around. And we're gonna run our lead screw through our C-beam end mount here. Let's go ahead and grab the lead screw. And then we're gonna add additional parts here, starting with our eight millimeter bearing, our eight millimeter shim next, and then our lock collar. And if your lock collar is a little tight, you can always loosen up that set screw just to make sure that you can slide these parts down. Then you're gonna run the lead screw to your anti-backlash nut block, and you're gonna rotate the lead screw to the right. You're gonna keep threading that through until you get to the other side, and we're gonna add our additional parts for that side as well, and then we're gonna to attach to our flexible coupling. So just keep these parts down here at the end, and let's go ahead and add first our lock collar, our eight millimeter shim, and then our eight millimeter bearing. And let's just go ahead and run this through. And you want the lead screw to meet the flexible coupling, just like so. Then we're going to place our parts into the C-beam end mount, and we're going to lock down our lock collar once the 8 millimeter bearing is inside the C-beam end mount. So let's go ahead and lock that down. And we're going to do the same to this side as well. All right. And then we're going to tighten down our set screw to our lead screw. I'm going to rotate it around and we're going to tighten down our additional screw here. Make sure we have a tight bond between the flexible coupling and our lead screw. So now, as you move the flexible coupling, you'll see that the whole actuator moves. That looks great, guys. Great job so far. So now we have our Z-axis actuator, and it looks great. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving forward here. So on this step, we are going to be adjusting our centrics on our Y-axis rails. So we have our two pieces of 1,000 millimeter C-beam. We also have our two assembled Y-plates, and we're going to need our spanner wrench. So to start off here, guys, we're simply going to utilize one of our rails to our Y-axis plate, and we're going to adjust our centrics so we have enough preload on the rail so we have a nice functioning system that is accurate. All right, so taking your Y plate, we're simply going to run it on top of the C-beam. And if you have too much preload from the start, you're gonna have to adjust your centrics. So let's go ahead and do that now. So basically you want the marked side of your centric to be facing you. 
So as we tighten these down, unfortunately the eccentrics do move. So we're just going to shift those back to the open position. And let's go ahead and give this a try. It should fit on there. Alright, perfect. So that slid on nicely. So now we're basically going to tighten down the eccentrics on this rail so we don't have any play in our wheels. This is actually pretty good so far, but we're going to tighten that down just to make sure everything is tight. Alright, so we're going to hang this off the edge slightly, give us access to our eccentrics. So we're just basically going to turn these to the right. So at this angle, that would be counterclockwise. And we're just gonna test the wheel to make sure that it's gonna lock into our track. So now we have enough pressure here. As you can see, it is on the track. And as I move it, I can get a little spin out of it. It's exactly what you want, guys. You wanna be able to spin it out a little bit, but if you let go of the gantry system, it will move. So that wheel is perfect. Let's go ahead and adjust our other. Alright, so now we're going to move on to our top two wheels here, starting with the right wheel. Remember to rotate these in the same direction, guys. So we're going counterclockwise. That's perfect. So we're going to move on to the left side. Perfect. All of our wheels are touching. They're tight against our track. That left back wheel here, I'm going to adjust a little bit more. So you want them to be consistent in strength. That's excellent. So as you can see, we have nice movement on our rail, exactly what we want guys. Let's go ahead and put this one to the side and we'll move on to our next Y plate. Go ahead and grab your C-beam rail. And make sure that your C-channel is facing appropriately. So for instance, this is going to be the left side of my machine since the C-channel is facing outward. And as you can see, this is going to be the right side of my machine because the C-channel is facing to the right. So just keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and make sure that our eccentrics are open completely. If not, go ahead and adjust them. So ours moved while we were tightening down our Y plate. I'm just going to adjust that real quick. So as you can see, our marked end is now facing us. That's precisely what you want, guys. So let's go ahead and slide this on our rail. Alright, that's perfect. So even at an open position, I'm already feeling some preload on my wheels. So we're going to have to adjust our eccentrics to make sure that we have the appropriate amount of preload on there. All right, so we're going to slide this off to the edge here. As you can see, our fixed wheels are on top, so we're going to be adjusting the eccentrics from the bottom. And this time we will be going clockwise. Starting with the right wheel, that one looks good. Let's go ahead and adjust our left wheel here. That one also feels great. All right, so we're moving right along to our back right wheel. That's a little too tight. So we're going to back off that. So you want to make small adjustments because if you over tighten or loosen, you'll lose that preload that's ideal for that wheel. That's perfect right there. So just moving in small increments seems to be the best solution for uh, adding preload. All right, that's perfect, guys. So we have the right amount of preload on each one of our wheels. Just double check that to make sure. We'll just double check how the gantry moves here. That looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right, guys, so on this step, we are going to be assembling our base for our machine. We're going to need our V-slot. We have two different sizes here of 20 by 40 V-slot. In addition to that, we're going to need 12 of our double L brackets, 12 of our single L brackets, 60 of our M5 T-nuts, our 8 millimeter screws, and for our tooling, our M5 ball driver, a magnetized screwdriver, a permanent marker, as well as our metric measuring tape. So to get started here guys, we're going to take notice to our two shorter pieces here of our 20 by 40 V-slot. This is going to cap the ends like a sandwich. So we're going to have one on the opposite end, which will be our back, and then one on the front. So in addition to that, we're going to have our three larger pieces of 20 by 40 V-slot. And these are going to run in between the sandwich configuration for our base beams to support this configuration. So let's go ahead and grab one of our 20 by 40 V-slot and we are simply going to put the T-nuts into place and start working on this base assembly. 
So on this top slot, we are going to insert eight of our M5 T-nuts, making sure that the flange side of the T-nut is facing inward. So it's gonna be facing you, and it's gonna re reside in the track, and the flange side will lock in to your eight millimeter screw. So make sure you insert that correctly, and let's go ahead and insert eight to the top. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the bottom track here. As you can see, you have two slots here on the 20 by 40. The first slot here has got eight of our M5 T-nuts. Let's go ahead and insert six of our M5 T-nuts into the bottom slot here. And the reason for the variance in quantity is due to our single L brackets, which we'll be using for our spoiler board mounting configuration. So those will reside here on the top slot facing upward so we can use a screw to mount from underneath of our spoiler board. So let's go ahead and finish this up with six in total and make sure to double check yourself guys. We don't want to have a random T-nut hanging around in the V-slot. All right, so we have a total here of eight on our top, six on the bottom. That's perfect guys. So let's go ahead and take this piece and move it to the side for now. And let's move on to our next piece of V-slot, making sure that these are the shorter of the five pieces of 20 by 40 V-slot, because remember these three beams here are going to be running in between these two. All right, so same process. We're gonna insert eight on the top and six on the bottom. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, six on the bottom. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and move this one to the side as well. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to our base beams here. So taking our first piece, we are simply going to place our M5 T-nuts in our top two slots here for our single L brackets, which will mount to our spoiler board. So we're gonna have a total of four. So two and two. All right, so let's go ahead and insert those now. So this is gonna be the only piece since this is gonna be in the middle of our configuration. We're gonna have T-nuts and single L brackets on each side. So the configuration is strong and it's able to mount into that spoiler board correctly. All right, and we're gonna take our ball driver here and move these down to make room for our additional T-nuts that are going to be utilized with our double L brackets. They're gonna to mount to our sandwich pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and put in four in total, two on each side. All right, let's go ahead and rotate this piece around. And we're gonna put two on each side of this end of the V-slot as well, since it is also going to be mounting to our frame. All right, perfect. So this is our middle beam. We're gonna go ahead and move this to the side for now. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our additional piece of 20 by 40 V-slot. And this one we are going to consider to be our right beam. So we're gonna place our T-nuts here on the left side, making sure that of course it's on the top slot here of our 20 by 40 V-slot. So we're gonna go ahead and insert just two of our M5 T-nuts. And then once again for our double L brackets, two on each side of the 20 by 40 V-slot. Let's go ahead and rotate this around. And once again, two and two. So let's get that done, guys. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and put this one to the side. And let's grab our next piece. And this one we will consider our left beam. So we're gonna go ahead and take two of our M5 T-nuts and insert them here on the right side of our 20 by 40 V slot. Making sure, of course, it's on the top slot, guys. As you can see, let's go ahead and slide these down. And we're gonna go ahead and insert two of our M5 T-nuts here on each end, just like we did the others. All right, let's go ahead and rotate the V-slot around. And once again, two on each side. All right, so now that we have all of our T-nuts in place, we're gonna go ahead and start off by assembling our double L brackets to each end of our 20 by 40 V-slot. So making sure that we're just doing this to our long three metal beams. The other sides are not gonna use double L brackets on each end. So let's go ahead and start with this piece first. Go ahead and lay that flat. And taking notice to our double L bracket, 
As you can see, we have hole spacing that differs here. We are going to be attaching our double L bracket with these two holes here that are closest to the seam. So it's gonna lay like so. So let's go ahead and take a couple of our eight millimeter screws and let's mount this into place. All right, so as you can see, we have a little space here where our double L bracket is not completely covering the 20 by 40 V slot. That is fine. We have slotted holes in this double L bracket for the purpose of modularity. So if you need to extend it, bring it down upward. It's all versatile as well as the hole spacing too. We want to make sure that this double L bracket is to the top portion of the V slot, even and flush. So wherever your M5 T nuts are located, which ours are located on the top rail here, your double L bracket should be towards the top portion here of your rail. With that being said, let's go ahead and rotate this around and we'll complete the same process for our additional sides. Now this is gonna differ a little bit because it's a mirror image. So right now it looks like it's on the bottom portion, but really it's the top compared to our other side. So make sure you guys uh, notice that. Alright, so that's what a completed double L bracket configuration looks like on the end of our 20 by 40 V slot. Now we're going to do the same process for our other side. All right, perfect. So one of our beams are complete. As you can see, we still have our T-nuts here. So this is going to be for our left beam. We're gonna go ahead and put that to the side for now. So grab your additional base beams, and we're gonna go ahead and latch on our double L brackets. Once again, can't stress this enough, make sure that this whole spacing here that's closest to the seam is latched on to your 20 by 40 V slot. So let's go ahead and do that correctly, guys. And also, let's pay attention to where this seat's flush. As you can see, I'm on the top portion of my rail, but the only reason that that is so is because my T-nuts are also residing here on the top track, which will be for our single L brackets. So make sure that that corresponds with that location. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, rotate it. Let's go ahead and rotate this to the other side and let's finish these double L brackets. All right, perfect. Another one down. Let's go ahead and move that to the side and let's move on to our additional beam. Taking notice to where our T nuts are located. So they're in the upright position here. So let's go ahead and start on this end first. Let's go ahead and latch on our double L brackets. All right, and let's go ahead and rotate this around to the other side. And let's mount these additional brackets. All right, perfect. So we've completed all of our base beams here with our double L brackets. So now from here, we are gonna go ahead and start our configuration. So taking our two front and back pieces here for our base assembly, we're gonna go ahead and start this setup. All right, so this is what the configuration is going to look like. Step back here a little bit so you can get a good look at it. It looks sweet. This is a very sturdy configuration. This machine is definitely going to have a sturdy base, which is essential for any type of good design for a CNC mill. And this thing is awesome, guys. So we're definitely moving along nicely here on the base assembly. Now we're going to do some measurements, and we're going to go ahead and latch in our double L brackets to our T-nuts. So let's go ahead and get started on that. To start off, we're going to go ahead and take measurements here on the end of our 20 by 40 V slot. So the measurements here on our end beams 
are going to be at six inches to the middle of the v-slot channel here so what i've done is i've made a point of reference as you can see just a little spot here with my permanent marker you don't have to get carried away it's just an easy point of reference so you know where to mount these double l brackets and keep the system square which is essential for an accurate machine so we have this at six inches we're also going to measure for the opposite end here so an additional six inches to the middle of the channel of the v-slot and once again guys we want to make sure that we have each one of our beams in here correctly before we start mounting our double l brackets so as you can see we have our middle beam which is going to have t-nuts on one side as well as the other so that's correct we also have our right beam which is going to have t-nuts here on the left side that is correct and then our left side which is also going to have t-nuts on the right side that is correct so everything looks good if not go ahead and reorganize this before we start mounting and let's go ahead and get started with this guys so since we have this in six inches from the end of our 20 by 40 v slot we are going to adjust our t-nuts accordingly so taking our magnetized screwdriver here we're simply going to shift these t-nuts around and to the right orientation of where they're going to mount so we have all our t-nuts pretty much on one side we're going to go ahead and shift these around so starting with the top here I'm going to go ahead and push these down I'm going to make sure I have t-nuts for each one of my double L brackets so I'm going to go ahead and manipulate them into a position to where they can be mounted now while doing this you want to keep in mind our single L brackets which I've also made an additional mark for with our measurement those are also going to mount inside so once you mount the double L brackets you can't manipulate a t-nut that is outside of that point so we want to make sure that we have everything in an orientation that can be maneuvered after we start mounting these double L brackets so I'm going to go through that with you and let's go ahead and move these down now I want two at the very end for my double L brackets alright and I'm going to leave one here in the middle where my other point of reference is which that measurement guys is at is at 12 and a half inches so go ahead and make that point of reference on each side of the 20 by 40 V slot alright so we're going to go ahead and leave one of our t-nuts here in place for this piece then we're going to go ahead and leave two more here for our double L bracket and one more for our single L bracket and two more down here for our other double L bracket alright so now we're going to go ahead and work on the bottom track here and we're pretty much going to match them up with our t-nuts that we have aligned on the top track so let's go ahead and do that now now for this bottom track we're not going to be using our single L brackets to mount to our spoiler board it's just the top portion so all we have to worry about is our double L brackets here and I like to kind of get them in place it makes for an ease of assembly guys when you're having to shift this around to mount it with an 8mm screw it gets kind of difficult so just try to help yourself out and put these into a position where they can mount easily alright perfect so we have everything in position let's go ahead and turn this rail upright making sure that the position is correct to our point of reference remember we're lining with the center channel here of a v-slot and let's go ahead and grab one of our 8mm screws and our M5 ball driver and let's mount this first double L bracket what I'm doing here is I'm shifting the t-nuts into position so I can access the hole here and the screw will mount directly to the t-nut so if you find that you can't get the screw in place you're definitely gonna have to move that t-nut around and you will find the position that's necessary for that screw to find home alright so let's go ahead and mount the additional screws here if you find that the t-nut is too far in use a magnetized screwdriver and you can pull it out all right perfect so we have this one mounted to our 20 by 40 v slot as you can see it is aligned that looks great guys so let's go ahead and move to our next section here making sure this one is measured correctly as well should be at the halfway point 
which is at 19 and a half inches. So if you haven't marked that yet, go ahead and put a little speck here. And let's go ahead and mount these T-nuts, guys. All right, those are mounted. Moving on to the next side here. All right, perfect. So the middle beam now is mounted. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our last beam here on the side. All right, perfect. That's looking exceptional, guys. We have our brackets in place. This configuration is looking great. We're going to go ahead now and put in our single L brackets to our marked slots. Once again, we'll double check that uh, measurement. Make sure you guys have that in place. So we're at 12 and a half inches. So go ahead and make a point of reference to that as well as on your additional side. So let's go ahead and mount our single L brackets. Once again, this configuration is for the mounting of our spoiler board. We are simply going to pay attention to our hole spacing here once again, making sure that our crease and our hole that's closest to that crease is going to be mounted to our 20 by 40 V slot. It's basically going to be assembled like so. So let's go ahead and mount that, guys. All right, so make sure your point of reference here is to the left side of your single L bracket. And for this side, we are also going to do that on the right side. So the right corner of your single L bracket will be at 12 and a half inches. And that's just to make sure that the system is proportional and you have structure on each side of the spoiler board. All right. And if you have any issues with this actually turning, all you have to do is simply put your driver in and shift it into place, making sure that it's flush and upright. The same with this one. All right, so that's looking sharp, guys. So now we're going to go ahead and work towards the middle here. Basically, we're going to have our single L brackets on each side of our middle beam, on the right side of our left, and on the left side of our right beam. So we're going to go ahead and take our measurements now. So I like to put these about one foot away from our, our front base piece. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that point of reference. And basically I just put a little speck there. I don't want to get carried away because I like my machine to look nice and sleek. I don't want any marks all over it. So let's go ahead and move to the center. Once again, one foot. The only difference is this is going to be on each side. So we can just simply align that. And then on our left beam here. All right, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and take our ball driver now. We're going to go ahead and shift these into place. Taking that one T-nut, we're going to shift down. That's going to be for the opposite side. And this one we're going to align with our point of reference. So go ahead and grab one of your single L brackets, eight millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and mount this into place. All right, perfect. Now we're going to work towards the middle beam. Same thing. All right, and then the opposite side here. All right, and then lastly, our right beam. So now this side is complete thus far. We're going to go ahead and move to our opposite end of the machine. So let's go ahead and rotate that now, guys, and we'll start working on that assembly. All right, so now that we have our machine rotated, guys, we're going to go ahead and do the same process to this opposite end. So we're going to mount our double L brackets first. So let's go ahead and move our T-nuts into position. So I'm going to lay this 20 by 40 rail here flat. Wait, it's easy to see which position needs to be where. So we're going to go ahead and shift two down for this 20 by 40. And remember, one is going to be for our spoiler board. So we're going to leave that in place. So the top slot is done. We're going to go ahead and move on to the bottom slot. And this one's going to differ from the top because we're not going to have our spoiler board mounting L brackets. That looks great, guys. Let's go ahead and move this upright. 
And once again, we're going to have to do some measuring, making sure that everything is aligned. So as you can see, my point of reference here is for six inches. That looks great. So once again, we're going to go to our single L bracket, which is at 12 and a half inches. That's perfect. And same for our opposite end here, six inches and then 12 and a half. That's perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and mount these double L brackets, guys. All right, making sure that that's aligned in the middle of the track here of the 20 by 40. I'm gonna grab my ball driver, and I'm gonna mount this T-nut into place. Same for our bottom L bracket. All right, that looks excellent, guys. So we have all of our double L brackets mounted to this side, as well as the opposite side here. As you can see, this is a large configuration, which is gonna be awesome for this machine. Super excited. So we're gonna go ahead and mount our single L brackets next. Remember our point of reference here. We measured out to 12 and a half inches on each side. We're also gonna measure a foot out on each one of our base beams. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so let's go ahead and take one of our single L brackets here with an eight millimeter screw, and let's mount this into our T-nut. Remember, we wanna make sure it's on this uh, right corner here of the right side, and then the left corner here on our single L bracket for the left side. Awesome, so let's go ahead and move on to our left beam. And move on to the center. All right, now we're on to our last L bracket. All right, great job so far, guys. Let's just stand back and take a look at what we have done so far. This looks excellent, guys. Superb frame that we have thus far, and we're gonna go ahead and move on to our additional steps. Super excited. So let's go ahead and move on, guys. All right guys, so moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our cast corner brackets on each one of our Y axis beams to prepare it for assembly to our base. So we're gonna need eight of our cast corner connectors, eight of our eight millimeter screws, eight of our 10 millimeter screws, as well as 16 of our M5 T nuts. And then over here, we're gonna have our Y axis assemblies that we have so far. So let's go ahead and get started. First off with our M5 T-nuts, we are going to insert them into these bottom two tracks here of the C-beam. So one on each side. And we'll just move this one off to the side for now until we can move on to this piece. So now what I'm gonna do is simply just pull this off to the side for now. And we're gonna grab one of our eight millimeter screws and a cast corner. And the assembly is going to lay in the track like so. So make sure you mount it accordingly. Let's go ahead and put an eight millimeter screw in there and let's attach this. And we're gonna leave it a little bit loose. That way we can move this back and forth to find our right position for our uh, base assembly. So let's go ahead and grab another one of our cast corners and an eight millimeter screw. And let's place this one as well. All right, perfect. So now let's go ahead and rotate the C-beam around and we're going to do the same thing to the opposite side. All right, perfect. So this one is complete. So we can move this off to the side for now. And let's move on to our next piece. So same thing, we're just going to go ahead and put T-nuts in first. And let's go ahead and mount these cast corners. All 
All right, let's go ahead and rotate the C-beam. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and bring in our base assembly, and then we're gonna mount these Y-axis beams onto our base assembly. So let's go ahead and do that now, guys. All right, so now that our base assembly is in place here, We've got our additional parts that are going to mount this base assembly to our Y-axis beams. So let's make sure to take one of our M5T nuts first and let's insert it into our tracks here of the 20x40 rail. So a total of two on the top track of this 20x40 rail. And we're going to go ahead and take our appropriate Y-axis beam, making sure that our plate assembly is on the right and the C-channel is facing to the right for the right side. So let's go ahead and bring this over. All right, so for this assembly, we're basically going to take the difference between each end of our C-beam. So it's approximately 10 millimeters from the C-beam to the end of this rail. And that's where our C-beam end mount is going to sit flush with our 20 by 40 rail. So if you want to go ahead and take that measurement or just line it up as best you can, because you can always adjust this placement by loosening your corner brackets. So we're going to line this up as square as possible. And then we're going to mount our cast corners to our T-nuts here on the 20 by 40 rail. So grab one of your 10 millimeter screws and let's fasten that into place. All right, now I'm gonna slowly drag this off to the edge of the table here so I can access underneath the cast corner and fasten that eight millimeter screw down to our C-beam. That looks good, so I'm gonna tighten that down. And let's go ahead and fasten our other cast corner down as well. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and move to the left side of our base assembly, and we're gonna add two T-nuts on the inside track here for 20 by 40. Then we're gonna bring over our Y-axis beam and set that right here. Once again, make sure you have about 10 millimeters here of space for your C-beam end mount. That looks good. So let's go ahead and take one of our 10 millimeter screws and fasten down this cast corner. All right, and then from underneath, I'm gonna tighten down the eight millimeter screw to our C-beam. All right, so let's go ahead and fasten down the other cast corner. All right, perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate the system 180 degrees, and then we're gonna mount our additional cast corners on the opposite side. So let's go ahead and do that now, guys. All right, so now that we have our machine turned 180 degrees, let's go ahead and finish up the rest of these cast corners. All right, perfect. So now we have our Y axis in place on both sides. This is looking really awesome. All right, guys, so on this step, we are going to be making some adjustments here to our Y beams that are resting on our base frame. So basically the way that this is shaped and the configuration that we've built, we're using C-beam end mounts on the end of each actuator. So with that being said, we need the difference between the C-beam and our 20 by 40 rail. So now that we have everything in place, this adjustment's gonna be made easy. All we have to do is loosen up one of the Y-axis points, slide it down slightly, and that way we can align the C-beam end mount flush to our 20 by 40 rail. So let's go ahead and start with our first point here. We're just gonna simply slide this past the table a little bit, and you can move your Y plate out of the way. We're just gonna loosen them slightly, that way we can move this inward and then tighten it back down. All right, since that's moved, we can adjust this to our 20 by 40 by simply pushing it down. Using our C-beam end mount as reference, we are gonna take our measurement. So as you can see, the C-beam end mount is flush here to our 20 by 40. And if it's not, we can always loosen and push it down a little bit further. So just wanna make sure that that's flush on our 20 by 40 here. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and tighten that down. All right, perfect. So you should have this much of your 20 by 40 hanging loose, you will see that it seats flush. That's exactly what we want, guys. So let's go ahead and do the left side now. 
Alright, so now that those are loose, we're going to push this down using our CB min mount as reference. Just double check that to make sure that our distance is correct. Alright, and that looks perfect. So let's go ahead and tighten that down. Alright, so now we're just going to go ahead and rotate the system around and we're going to do the same thing to the opposite ends. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alright, now that we have our machine turned 180 degrees, we're going to go ahead and loosen these brackets. Alright, now let's go ahead and slide that over using our C-beam end mount as reference. Let's check that measurement. Alright, that looks perfect, so let's go ahead and tighten that down. Alright, so now let's work our way to the left side here. Once again, let's loosen these cast corner connectors. Alright, now let's go ahead and slide this down. Alright, that looks perfect, so let's go ahead and tighten that down. So now we have our system complete here with our Y-axis beams on our base assembly. It's looking great guys, great job so far. So let's go ahead and move on to our next steps. All right guys, moving right along. On this step we are going to be taking our assembly, adding it to our X-axis. So we have our X carriage system as well as our Z-axis on this assembly. This is all gonna ride onto our X-axis, which is going to attach to our Y plates here. So, in this step, we're going to need two of our 90 degree joining plates, four of our end caps, eight of our self tapping screws, six of our M5 T nuts, six of our 8 millimeter screws, our spanner wrench ball driver, and our power drill. So, to get started here, guys, we're going to go ahead and take our X axis C beam, so it's going to be at 1,000 millimeters, and we're going to rest this here on each one of our Y beams, like so, and we're going to take our assembly and run it onto this x-axis. So we're gonna adjust our eccentrics, make sure that we have preload on this rail, and then we're going to assemble it to our Y plates here. All right, so let's go ahead and slide this on, just like so. And then we're gonna set that back down on the Y beams, making sure that you have a prop here, because this is top heavy. So utilize the machine's frame itself in order to get through this. All right, so now from here, we're gonna go ahead and take our 90 degree joining plates with our eight millimeter screws, and we're gonna run those through each one of these holes. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and attach our M5 T-nuts to each one of these screws. So we're just gonna thread those into place, and it really helps for assembling this. We're basically gonna run this through the track of the C-beam and then tighten it down. All right, so we have this one done so far. We're gonna go ahead and slide this into the first track here of our C-beam. So all you have to do is align your T-nuts and you simply slide it through the track here. I'm using my ball driver so I can turn the T-nut. All right, once you have your T-nuts in place here, we are gonna make sure our 90 degree joining plate is flush against our C-beam. And then we're going to tighten this down, guys. So now we're going to go ahead and work on the other side, the exact same way we did this side. Let's take your 90 degree joining plate and let's run those screws through. Alright, perfect. So now that we have all those tight, we are going to lift this system up and place it onto our, our Y plates here on top of the extrusion. All right, and that looks perfect. So basically, the reason why I have each one of my Y plates to the front of the machine is because we have our frame assembled, so now we can square off the machine, making sure that there is no slanted area or any area of the machine that is not square. So by bringing this axis forward, with our x-axis, we can secure that our machine is fully square. So let's go ahead and attach our self-tapping screws to the top of this assembly. So starting with the left side first, we're gonna go ahead and fasten that down into place. Let's do our additional screw here. Now let's go ahead and move on to our next side here. Make sure to align to your holes here. Alright, that's perfect. So let's go ahead and fill in each bare end of the extrusion with our end caps. Let's grab one of your end caps and a self-tapping screw. And let's go ahead and attach this. And we're going to do the rest of them the same exact way. Simply place it and then screw down your self-tapping screw.
All right, check out what we have so far, guys. It's looking great. Super excited about this machine coming together. It's looking awesome so far. So now we're gonna go ahead and adjust our eccentrics here on our x-axis. All right, so we're gonna go from underneath here and adjust the eccentrics, making sure that our wheels are tight against here, against our x-axis. So right now they're kind of loose. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate these counterclockwise. And keep in mind, each eccentric should be adjusted in the same direction. All right, that one looks good. Alright, those two are good. I'm going to move on to the next side here. Alright, perfect. So now our centrics are tightened down. As you can see, it's a smooth ride on the rail. It's exactly what we want, guys. Alright, that's looking great. We're going to go ahead and move on to our next steps. Alright, guys, moving on to the next step here. As you can see, our machine is coming along very nicely. It's looking exceptional. We also are going to be adding more strength to the machine. That's right. We're not done yet. We have cast corner brackets that we're going to attach to the inside of the x-axis to our y plates which is going to make for a very rigid design there's not going to be much flex in this machine at all so in this step we're going to need 10 of our cast corner brackets our 10 millimeter screws our 8 millimeter screws 8 of our m5 t-nuts 12 of our drop-in t-nuts so to get started here guys we're going to go ahead and take our m5 t-nuts and run these through our x-axis c-beam so through these tracks on each one we're going to have a T-nut and it's going to mount to our Y plate. So let's make sure that we get these T-nuts in place. As you can see I haven't capped this with a C-beam end mount so it's, no, it's not an actuator yet with our lead screw. So we have open slots here and I did that on purpose so we could insert these T-nuts and strengthen the system. So let's go ahead and put T-nuts in the first track here. Grab another T-nut and insert it into the second track and the third track and the fourth track. And if you need to push those through, you can use your ball driver. So now we're going to go ahead and take our cast corner brackets with our 10 millimeter screws. Place that through one of the holes of the cast corner. And these are going to be placed like so. So make sure that this corresponds with the design of the cast corner. And then on the 10 millimeter screw, we're going to go ahead and place one of our drop-in T-nuts and thread that on. And the reason for doing so is because we're going to actually mount this to our Y plate here on the first track. So we're going to do that with a drop in T nut because if we had a regular T nut, it would drop to the bottom. So these drop in T nuts really work. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and grab an 8 millimeter screw. We're going to go ahead and attach that to our M5 T nut on the first track. We're not going to tighten that down completely because we want to make sure we can slide this to our Y plate here, just like so. And we're going to go ahead and tighten that drop in T nut down. Make sure it inserts into the track. And the T nut will do the rest of the work. It'll lock into the track with these teeth. And once you spin, it'll lock in like so. And that piece of uh, cast corner isn't going anywhere. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten down the 8 millimeter screw as well. All right, perfect. So that's the first one done. Let's go ahead and work on our additional three. Remember to use the 10 millimeter screw with your drop in T nut. That's because of these feet here. When it lays on the track, you need that additional screw link to fasten it down completely. All right, so let's go ahead and thread on our drop in T nut and fasten this additional bracket down. Alright, perfect. So we have one side done. We're going to do the same exact process for our left side. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys.
All right, perfect, guys. So we have all of our cast corners in place on our x-axis. So now we're going to actually go from behind the machine, and we're going to attach two more of our cast corners. But first, we're going to have to rotate our machine 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that now, guys. All right, so now that we have our machine turned 180 degrees, we're now going to mount our cast corners from underneath the C-beam to our Y plate, which is going to be on our extrusion, as well as on the left side. So let's go ahead and take our, our parts that we had left over, starting with our 10 millimeter screw. I'm going to go ahead and twist on one of our drop-in T-nuts. And then taking an 8 millimeter screw and another one of our drop-in T-nuts. All right, so now the 8 millimeter screw is going to go within the track. The 10 millimeter screw is going to sit outside of the track, so we have that additional length on the screw. So remember, to, uh, don't get them confused, guys, because you might have issues mounting this. So we're going to go ahead and place it in the track here. Then we're going to adjust our other T-nut so it fits in as well. And then we're going to tighten that down. So we tightened down our 10 millimeter screw. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten down the 8 millimeter screw. All right, so this side is done. Go ahead and take a look at that. So we have all kinds of support here for the x-axis. This thing is super rigid. All right, so let's go ahead and do our left side. Let's go ahead and configure our cast corner, adding our drop-in T-nuts. All right, and let's go ahead and mount this. All right, perfect. As you can see, we have our bracket in place. It's tightened and secure against our x-axis. This is looking really sharp, guys. Excellent job so far. So let's go ahead and move on to the next steps. All right, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our router spindle mount to our z-axis here on our machine. So in this step, we're going to need our router spindle, as well as four of our 10 millimeter screws, four of our 8 millimeter screws, four of our drop-in T-nuts, four of our black angle corner connectors, measuring tape, and our M5 ball driver. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and set up our router spindle so we can mount this easily to our Z-axis. So taking one of your black angle corner connectors and a 10 millimeter screw, we're simply going to mount this into our top hole. So we're gonna to go to each end, so the second hole over here, and we're gonna mount each black angle corner connector. And you want to make sure that your black angle corner connector is flush against the end of your router spindle. Just make sure that you push that back when you're uh, fastening it down. Alright, so let's move on to our next tool. Alright, then rotate this around. And we're going to do the same thing for these two holes here on the end. Alright, that looks great. So we have all of our black and corner connectors onto our router spindle. So from here, we're going to go ahead and take our 8 millimeter screws, and we're going to place them through the black and corner connector, and we're going to thread on our drop-in T-nuts. And the reason for doing so is so we can just simply slide this into the track of our Z-axis, and then tighten it down. So let's go ahead and do that for all of our black angle corner connectors. All right, so now that we have that complete, we're gonna go ahead and take our measuring tape, and we're going to measure up two inches from our end mount to our uh, V-slot here. So once you measure two inches, you can make a mark with your permanent marker, just like a little spot. That way you have reference on both sides, so your router spindle won't be crooked. So I'm just leaving like a little spot. So now from here, we're going to go ahead and mount our router spindle to the Z-axis. So we're going to go ahead and rotate these drop-in T-nuts so they fit into the track. And then while we're tightening down the T-nut, it's going to rotate like so and grab onto the V-slot track. Making sure that the bottom point of our black angle corner connector here on the bottom is aligned with our point of reference on both sides. So we're simply going to rotate our drop-in T-nuts vertically like so. That way they fit into the track. Now let's go ahead and bring that in and tighten down our first black angle corner connector. All right, so once again, we wanna line this up on our left side to our point of reference. That looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten the rest of these black angle corner connectors down. All right. 
quite perfect. That looks excellent, guys. So we have our router spindle mount in place on our Z-axis, and we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so moving on to the next step here, guys, we're gonna be assembling our 20 by 20 to the back of our 1,000 millimeter C-beam here on our X-axis. So if you haven't already, go ahead and rotate your machine 180 degrees so the back of the machine is facing you. That way we can get a clean mount to our 1,000 millimeter C-beam. So in this step, we're gonna need our 20 by 20 1,000 millimeter rail. We're also gonna need two of our single L brackets, two of our slot washers, two of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our M5 T-nuts, two of our eight millimeter screws, two of our 20 millimeter screws, and two of our drop-in T-nuts. Our tooling for this, we're just gonna need our M5 ball driver. All right, so go ahead and grab one of your single L brackets. Paying attention to the whole spacing here, we need the hole that's closest to our seam, and that will be mounting to our 1000 millimeter C-beam. So go ahead and put one of your 20 millimeter screws through, as well as a nine millimeter aluminum spacer or slot washer. We're gonna go ahead and thread on our drop-in T-nut. Let's go ahead and bring the X-axis forward and let's mount it right to the end here. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. We're gonna rotate this back around. So just make sure that this is nice and tight. And we can always shift it to make sure that this is completely straight. That looks good, so let's go ahead and go to the left side. Same exact thing. Make sure that your whole spacing here is closest to the seam that will be mounting to your C-beam. All right, that looks excellent. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our 20 by 20 rail. Go ahead and push this X-axis back a little bit. And on this rail, we're gonna insert our M5 T-nuts on each end. So one here and one on the opposite end here. And this is gonna lock in to our single L bracket. So we're gonna flip this and then rest it right on top of our single L brackets. And then go ahead and grab your eight millimeter screws. And we're gonna lock this into place. All right, now let's go to the other side. Same exact thing. So as far as how the 20 by 20 is positioned, I try to line it up here with my 1000 millimeter C-beam. So as you can see on both sides, we're pretty much even here with the C-beam. And that's exactly what we want, guys, because our wires are gonna be running from our motors as well as our limit switches. So we wanna make sure that this cable tray is gonna be utilized efficiently. So make sure that you have it aligned properly, guys. So that's the mounting of the 20 by 20, and that looks excellent. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We're gonna be assembling our NEMA 23s to our Y axis on both sides. So as you can see, we're at the back of the machine currently. This is where the motors are gonna reside on each axis. So if you don't have your machine turned around to the back end, make sure to go ahead and do that. We're gonna start off by mounting our motors to our C-beam end mounts on each Y axis. So in this step, we're gonna need two of our NEMA 23 motors, four of our C-beam end mounts, four of our 50 millimeter screws, 16 of our 20 millimeter screws, four of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our flexible couplings, four of our eight millimeter lock collars, four of our eight millimeter bearings, four of our eight millimeter shims. And our tooling for this is gonna be our ball driver set. So to get started here, guys, we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our C-beam end mounts, making sure that the recessed hole here is facing inward. It's gonna place like so onto our C-beam. So we're gonna start off by mounting the C-beam end mount first. So let's go ahead and grab some of our 20 millimeter screws. And we're gonna run this screw into the C-beam. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing for our additional holes here on the C-beam end mount. So as you can see, each hole here is recessed, so the screw will fit flush into our C-beam end mount. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect. So now our C-beam end mount is in place here on our C-beam. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount our motor. So go ahead and grab one of your NEMA 23 motors and one of your flexible couplings. Taking notice to our size difference in the holes here, we have a quarter inch bore for our motor shaft. Then up on the opposite end, this is gonna be for our lead screw. So make sure that we're attaching this end to the motor shaft. We're gonna rotate the motor shaft and find the flat portion. We're gonna place our flexible coupling on and then tighten it down with our ball driver. You have two set screws here, so we're gonna tighten those down. And then on the opposite end, we're just gonna go ahead and tighten down this additional screw. 
All right, perfect. So now we are ready to mount our motor to our C-beam end mount. So generally I like to keep the open belt, the open belt symbol upright. So we're gonna be mounting the motor here on these two ends. So it's gonna rest like so. That way our, our leads here will uh, be able to run to our X-Pro. So let's go ahead and grab two of our 50 millimeter screws and our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. And then we're going to align this with these two holes here on the top of the C-beam end mount. And we're going to lock them into place, guys. Alright, perfect. So that's nice and secure. That motor's not going anywhere. That's perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on our left side. So starting with our C-beam end mount, making sure that the recessed hole here is facing in. It's very important, guys. So let's go ahead and mount the C-beam end mount. All right, so now that we have our C-beam end mount in place, we're gonna go ahead and mount our motor. It's just gonna be on these two ends. First, we're gonna go ahead and put our flexible coupling onto our motor shaft. Remember, the quarter inch bore is gonna attach, and then we're gonna latch on our set screw here. All right, and then we're gonna rotate it and tighten down our additional screw. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and grab our 50 millimeter screws, running them through both sides of the motor here. And then go ahead and add your 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. And let's go ahead and tighten that down to our C-beam end mount. All right, perfect. That looks excellent, guys. So we got our motors mounted. Now we are going to rotate our machine around to the front. And we're going to insert our lead screw and finish up our additional C-beam end mounts and need to cap the other side. So let's go ahead and rotate the machine now. And then we'll... Uh, attach these additional parts. All right, so now that we have our machine rotated to the front, we are gonna go ahead and continue our assembly process here, starting with our C-beam end mounts. We're gonna go ahead and mount those into place. So make sure your recessed hole here is facing inward. I can't stress that enough, guys. It's very important. So let's go ahead and attach this to our C-beam. All right, let's go ahead and tighten down the additional three screws here. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to the other side and we'll tighten down that C-beam end mount to our C-beam. Once again, we wanna make sure that the recessed hole is facing inward. So we're gonna mount it like so. All right, perfect. So now our C-beam end mounts are in place. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on with our lead screws. So we have two of our 1,000 millimeter lead screws that we're gonna place in the Y axis. So let's go ahead and run our first lead screw through. So simply just place it into the hole of the C-beam end mount. And then we're gonna add some additional parts, starting with our eight millimeter bearing, our eight millimeter shim next, followed by our lock collar. We're gonna keep these parts down here at this end. And we're gonna go ahead and run our lead screw through until we reach our nut blocks. So you're just gonna rotate that lead screw to the right and it's gonna feed through the nut block. We still have these nut blocks loose, remember? We're not gonna tighten them down until we get this lead screw completely through and seated properly. And I'll show you that step here in a minute. So just keep rotating this down until we reach the other side. Once you see that the lead screw is exposed, so now that our lead screw is exposed, we're gonna go ahead and add our additional parts, starting with our lock collar first, then our eight millimeter shim, and lastly, our eight millimeter bearing. All right, so now we're gonna to continue to rotate this until we reach our flexible coupling here at the motor. So let's go ahead and continue to rotate this, keeping these parts down at this end. All right, so we've reached our flexible coupling here. So as you can see, we have our lead screw that is inside of our C-beam end mount so you don't have any exposure to that lead screw. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our additional parts here and pop them into place. Your bearing should go into the C-beam end mount and then we're gonna tighten down that lock collar here. Make sure it's nice and tight. We're gonna go up to this end where the motor is. Once again, we're gonna lock these parts into place. 
All right, so now we're going to go ahead and lock down the sleet screw to our flexible coupling. Starting with our screw here, we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. And then we're going to tighten down our set screw. So now you should have movement in your lead screw when you adjust your flexible coupling. So that's perfect, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our next side. All right, so inserting our lead screw first. Then we'll add our additional parts, our 8 millimeter bearing first, followed by our 8 millimeter shim, and our 8 millimeter lock collar. All right, so we're going to keep these parts at the end. So we're going to go ahead and rotate our lead screw to meet our nut block here on our Y plate. Go ahead and feed that through, rotating to the right. And once your lead screw is exposed, we're going to put our additional parts onto that end. Starting with our 8mm lock collar, followed by our 8mm shim, and our 8mm bearing. Alright, so we're going to continue to rotate this through until we reach our flexible coupling. Alright, so we've reached our flexible coupling. We're going to go ahead and tighten down our lock collar to this end of the axis first. So just make sure to pop in your bearing and we're going to lock down that lock collar. Alright, perfect. So now let's move up to the next side. Locking in our bearing, go ahead and tighten down that lock collar. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and tighten down our flexible coupling. So just go ahead and tighten down the screw and we're going to rotate it and tighten down the set screw on the other side. Alright, perfect. So now you should have rotation in your gantry, which we do. That's perfect, guys. So we have our lead screws assembled on our machine so far. It's really starting to come together, guys. This machine's looking great. So good job so far. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright, guys. So on this step, we are going to be assembling our motor and our lead screw to our x-axis. So as you can see, I have my machine rotated 90 degrees. So we are now on the right side of the machine and that is where the motor will be mounted. And the purpose for this is so we have a working space on our left side of the machine for your laptop or any type of electronics. So let's go ahead and mount that motor to the right side. In this step we're going to need two of our C-beam end mounts, two of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, eight of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our 8 millimeter bearings, two of our 8 millimeter lock collars, two of our 8 millimeter shims, our flexible coupling, NEMA 23 motor, and our tooling for this step is going to include our ball driver set. So let's go ahead and get started first with our C-beam end mount. We are going to latch that onto the x-axis, making sure that the recessed hole here for our 8 millimeter bearing is facing inside. So we're just going to simply lock this into our tapped holes of the C-beam. So as you can see the C configuration here is identical to our C-beam end mount. So let's go ahead and tighten that down guys. All right, perfect. So now our C-beam end mount is mounted. We're going to go ahead and mount our NEMA 23 next. So making sure that our cables are running downward, we're going to mount on these two ends of our motor. And the purpose for having this wire down is we are going to run our drag chain on the side. So this will simply slip into the sleeve and then we'll be able to run across this Y-axis. So let's go ahead and put on our flexible coupling first, making sure that the quarter inch bore is on our motor shaft. And make sure to tighten down your set screw on the flat shaft of the motor. And then rotate it. We're going to lock down this additional screw. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and run our 50 millimeter screws through the motor. Adding our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers to each screw. We're going to go ahead and lock that into our tapped holes here in the C-beam end mount. All right, perfect. That looks excellent, guys. So we've got that mounted tightly to our C-beam end mount. That works out perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and rotate our machine 180 degrees so we can access the other side, so we can cap on our additional C-beam end mount, as well as run our lead screw through. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, guys, so now that we have our machine rotated 180 degrees, we're going to go ahead and finish up this process by mounting our C-beam first, and then we'll add our lead screw with our additional parts. So once again, making sure the recessed hole here is facing inward, we're going to go ahead and mount this to our C-beam. All right, 
perfect. C-beam end mount is mounted. So now we're going to go ahead and put in our lead screw first. And then we'll add our additional parts. So we're going to go ahead and add our 8mm bearing. Our 8mm shim. And then our 8mm lock collar. Alright, so we're going to keep these parts down here at this end. Bringing the lead screw to our nut block, we are going to thread it through the first nut block by rotating to the right until we see our lead screw is exposed. And then we'll add our additional parts to the opposite side. Alright, we see it now. So let's go ahead and add our additional parts. Alright, so starting with our lock collar. And then our 8mm shim. And followed by our 8mm bearing. Now let's go ahead and rotate this all the way through. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and tighten down our lock collar on this end first. Pop in your 8mm bearing and let's go ahead and tighten down this lock collar. Alright, and then we're going to do this side next. So we're just going to go ahead and tighten down our flexible coupling now. And you should have movement in your gantry. Alright, it's perfect. So that worked out really well guys. We have our lead screws all in place. Machine is really starting to come together now. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright guys, so on this step we are going to go ahead and tighten down each one of our nut blocks on each one of our axis. The reason for doing so is we don't want any backlash in our system. And with this configuration with two nut blocks, we are not going to have any backlash. So we just want to make sure that we tighten those down now that our lead screw is seated in all of our axes. So let's go ahead and tighten those down now. So I'm starting with the right side here. And I'm just going to work my way around the machine. If you need to, you can rotate your gantry towards you or away from you using your flexible coupling. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer so I can tighten down my nut blocks. Alright, perfect. So we have our Y right side done, our X axis. Now we're going to go ahead and work on our Y left. Let's go ahead and tighten those down. Alright, perfect. Great job guys. So now we have all those nut blocks tightened down. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright, moving forward here guys. So on this step we are going to be bringing our whole gantry forward completely so we can make sure that our lead screws are aligned on both of our Y axes. So in order to do that we're going to utilize our flexible couplings on each one of our Y axis and we're going to rotate them in the same direction bringing this gantry all the way forward until we can't move the lead screw any further. This is going to make sure that our machine is completely square. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so both of our actuators are now completely forward, so our whole gantry system is completely square now. So we're going to leave it just like so, and we're going to move on to our next step. Alright guys, so moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our end caps to each one of our exposed ends of the extrusion. So we have 20 by 40s all the way around the machine that we're going to be capping, as well as our 20 by 20 here, we are going to cap as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parts required for this step. We're going to need nine of our end caps and nine of our self-tapping screws. And we're going to use our power drill, mount these in place. So what I did for this machine, since we're going to be rotating it a lot, and if you're working on a table that you don't really want to scratch, I just uh, pulled out some cardboard and I just put it on each one of our exposed ends of the 20 by 40. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So just grab one of your self-tapping screws and one of your end caps, and we're going to work on our first side here. So I'm just going to slide this off like so, giving me access to the 20 by 40 and let's go ahead and drill this into place. Alright, the key with these self-tapping screws is just make sure that you have a sturdy foundation here so I'm just holding on to our actuator, our y-axis here and I'm putting pressure on self-tapping screw and drilling and if you have any issues with it going in just pull back out, back in 
back out and then back in. You want to make sure that these are secure on the 20 by 40. That looks great, so let's go ahead and move on to our additional sides, guys. All right, so now we're on our last 20 by 40 that we're going to cap. So for this one, we are actually going to cap one of the one of the ends here, and that's for the purpose of mounting our cable chain to our bottom end. So we want to make sure that we only cap this one, guys. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, perfect. So that looks great. We have all our ends capped. So now we're going to move on to our 20 by 20, and we're going to cap both of these ends. So now that our end caps are in place, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. All right, guys, so on this step, we are going to be mounting our spoiler board. We're going to be utilizing 12 of our wood screws, and our tooling is going to be our power drill. So just a brief overview of how we're going to do this. We're going to be utilizing this section first by hanging our machine over, and we're going to mount from underneath. And then we're going to spin the machine 180 degrees, and then we're going to do this section. So let's go ahead and place the spoiler board now and we'll get into the mounting process guys. Alright guys, so we got our spoiler board in place. I just want to uh, show you a couple things. First of all, once you cut the spoiler board, you want space in between your gantry plates here on your Y axis. So just kind of split the difference here. Make sure your factory edge is facing the front of the machine. You see how nice and neat this looks? That's exactly how you want it guys. So let's go ahead and start this mounting process. Alright, so we got our machine in position. As you can see, it's hanging off the table slightly so we can access our single L brackets. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. Alright guys, so we've spun our machine 180 degrees. So now we've slid it off and we're going to attach our wood screws to our additional single L bracket. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so now that we have our spoiler board mounted, the mechanical portion of this machine is complete. Excellent job, guys.